Uh, so as we begin today, we're going to start looking at truth definers, this series of adrift, just that, that series of floating along. Uh, as we were uh, on vacation this past week, we went to Myrtle Beach. And, and in Myrtle Beach, uh, a beautiful time, great weather. Uh, all of us came back with some form of sunburned. That's what happens when you go to the beach for a day, uh, and don't always reapply sunscreen. So uh, as we go through that, uh, the, it just reminded me of, of why anchors are important. Uh, if you remember, about a, a year ago, they had a major hurricane come through, and that major hurricane did a lot of damage. And, and I started thinking about those anchors. Those, well, what would anchors do in, the, in that time of hurricane? Well, well, what the anchors do is they help keep the boat in one spot. Because if you don't have an anchor, your boat kind of looks like this. It kind of just looks like it's drifting and nice, and that's kind of calm waters and, and just kind of floats away. But if you have a storm, and, and that storm comes up, and you don't have that anchor, that boat's not going to be where you left it. And, and, and if you're on the boat, you're not going to be where you thought you were. You could be inland because the storm could drive you into the, into the coast. You could be out to sea because you have no idea. It could be upside down. But those anchors are important. Those anchors are, are part of, of who we are. Uh, uh, anchor, sorry, of who the boat, what the boat needs to survive. But we also need anchors. We have lots of things that are in our life that can cause us to go up and down and sideways and lose all sense of where we're supposed to be. We have these, the, these thing, this thing called life. Uh, sometimes you have this, uh, you know, the easy storm. You get up in the morning and you comb your hair and your comb breaks. Anyone have that issue? Brad, do you and I have that same issue? It, sometimes it breaks, sometimes it doesn't. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, we, we got back from vacation last night. We unpacked the car and we're all ready to go to sleep and, and, and I can't stop coughing. So I go to a separate room because so everyone else can sleep. A couple hours later, I hear Jacob in the bathroom, and he's not feeling so well, so that wakes everybody else up again. A couple hours after that, Beth gets up, and it's like, oh boy, yeah, this, this life that we have is, sometimes can cause us to drift, because tiredness can cause us to leave, to drift away from what we know is important. Tiredness can cause us to back off. Sometimes it's not even tiredness. Sometimes it's a, a, a major storm. Sometimes it's the health of a loved one that can cause us to drift because that, that, that anchor that we once had, that, that, that feeling, that trust that was once there, that truth that was holding us firm, sometimes loses its grip and we begin to float. We begin to float through life. We begin to float that, that it's not as important as it once was. Uh, uh, think about this. When you go on vacation and you don't go to church, what happens? Anything? Oh, maybe you guys all go to church when you're on vacation then. Okay, well then forget that illustration. Sometimes we just lose what day it is. So sometimes we miss out on hearing an important truth. Well, well Paul is, is uh, in this letter in Galatians. We're going to be looking at Galatians over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Galatians is Paul's letter to this church, churches in Galatia. Uh, and, and they've lost their way. Uh, they have this storm that's come up in their, in their faith walk. There's this storm that's come up that has, has them walking away from the truth that they've always held on to, the truth that Paul gave them. And, and, and that anchor is, is we're going to see it multiple times, but that, that anchor continues to draw them back, bring them back to the, to the center, to where they're supposed to be. And, and Paul is, is sharing with them, and this, this storm that comes up is there's some teachers that have come by, some teachers that have said, that told the people that they need to do something other than believe in Jesus. It's a, a Jesus and type situation. And, and as, as the, Paul was working through this, and Paul was delivering his message, and, and Paul was encouraging him to come back to the truth that he has, he, he has to redefine his truth. And, and we see this here in Galatians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. It's on the screen behind me, and it's also in your worship folder. Will you join me in reading our scripture for today? We who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles... Know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, 
but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. See, Paul's concern has come up is that the, the teachers that have come in, the teachers that said they need Jesus and, told the, the people of Galatia who aren't Jews that they need to be circumcised, that they need to follow the law. And the only way to come to Jesus is that you have to follow the law. And Paul's understanding of faith, Paul's understanding of Jesus' word, Paul's understanding uh, of his relationship with Christ is no. All we need is Jesus. You see, that's the truth Paul first comes up with, is, is this truth is that Jesus died for all people. And, and the, as the drift has started to happen, as the anchor is slowly being picked up, uh, the, the people were hearing, the people were hearing Jesus didn't die for all. He just died for a select food, a few. And we get that out of that verse 15. He says that, 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 that we who are Jews and not sinful Gentiles, because that's what they had come in. They came, the teachers come in and said, oh, you're Gentiles. You're bad. You're wrong. Jesus didn't die for you. You need to change. And Paul, when he came before that, he says, here, here's the gospel. Here's the good news. That Jesus died for all people. And sometimes as we think about our faith and we, uh, so we, I, I, I forgot to mention this part, so that, that those storms that come up, those things that kind of drive us away, uh, that can push us out, uh, I almost think they're not as storms. Uh, I, I like, I've been thinking about this quite some, for, for a while now. I, I think of them as crises of faith. Because those storms, those troubles that come up, those, the, those issues that rise up that, that draw us away from God are usually something that, that questions our faith. And one of that first questions is that Jesus didn't die for me. Or people like me. Or Jesus didn't die for people like them. But as we, we look at this gospel, we look at Jesus himself and, and we see who he reaches out to. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out. We read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and we see that Jesus isn't, he, his primarily audience is Jewish people. But that's not where he always is. He's, he's talking to the Syrophoenician woman who, said, who asked him to heal his daughter, and, or she asked him to heal his daughter, and, and, and Jesus kind of steps back and says, uh, no, I wasn't sent for that. And, and she says, but even, even the dogs get the crumbs. And Jesus says, your faith has made your daughter well. It wasn't that he wasn't going to help her. It was that, that moment of where's her trust? As soon as she believed in Jesus, as soon as she said that Jesus was the one, Jesus was that answer, <coughs> her daughter was well. <coughs> Excuse me. That, that, that part of us that doesn't always understand, that we think about the lepers, the lepers that, that Jesus would heal, the lepers were outcasts. They were not welcomed by anybody. They felt leprosy was a contagious disease. And once you had leprosy, you could give it to other people. Just like a cold. Cough in a hand. Actually, well, never mind. That's a bad joke. Uh, it, it, it's that moment, though, that, that they felt. So they would put them in colonies. Outside of places where no one would be. The Jewish law said that they were unclean. Meaning that if anyone came in contact, they could not go to worship for at least seven days. And you had to shout, unclean, unclean. You want to you think about going through town like that. Going through town and coming up to say, and it's coming and, and say unclean. But in, in our day and time, maybe we need to just admit our sin, walk up to say somebody, hi, I'm a liar. See how many friends you get that way. What if we walked up and said, hi, I'm forgiven. 
See, Jesus died for all people. Clean, unclean, Jewish, Gentile, black, white, straight, gay. Doesn't matter. Jesus died for all. And sometimes in that crisis of faith, we think, we think that Jesus didn't die for all people. But maybe we'll make it more personal that we don't think that Jesus died for me. That my sin is too bad. My secret is too dark. This faith, this crisis that I'm going through is pointing out all the wrongs that I've done and Jesus didn't die for me. That's a drift. The other, one of the other ones as Paul's talking about in this Galatians 2, 15 and 16 passages is, is that, um, that, that Jesus is Lord is the truth. And that's what Paul told them. Just confess. Jesus is Lord. He tells it to the churches in Philippi. He says, you can confess with your mouth and bow with your knee that Jesus is Lord. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, he says, as you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. It's pure and simple. But now in this Galatian church, they, they have it. It's confess Jesus is Lord and follow the law. Sometimes as we're drifting in that crisis of faith, sometimes it's, it's not that Jesus is the answer or Jesus is Lord. It's Jesus and something else. Jesus and I have to uh, drink coffee every third day. Jesus and I have to give 10%. Jesus and I have to to pray every moment of my life. Jesus and I have to live a righteous life. Jesus and I have to follow this law. And, and, and Paul's saying, no. It's just Jesus. That's all there is. It's just Jesus. You follow Jesus. Those other things will come as we follow Jesus. Those other things will, will start shaping our heart and our life. That's the Spirit of God working in our life. And we talked about that a couple weeks ago. But the, the Spirit of God who begins to open our eyes to different ways that we can deepen that relationship. But the first part of it is, is Jesus is Lord. And we start there. Jesus is Lord and he died for me and he died for all people. And as that becomes a part of our life and that becomes a part of who we are, we're no longer drifting. We're back into that anchor. We're back holding on to the truth once again. So sometimes we, we like complexity. I, I, I don't understand why, but we do. We, we, we don't like to keep everything simple. If you wanted to keep it simple, think about your car for a moment. Ever, have a new, ever get a new car lately within the last three years? How many people set their Bluetooths without looking at the manual? How many people ch can change their radio when the, when the battery went out? How many of us could, could figure out the seat selection thing? It's always on the side, right? Used to be just a knob. It used to be you didn't even, couldn't even change it. Sometimes you can move the seat forward and back, but that was about it. We, we've added this complexity. We, now you touch a button and you, if you press forward, the seat goes up and forward or back and forward. And sometimes you can turn in a pretzel if you're not careful. But we have all these complexities when simple would be nice. And that as we drift, as we move away from that, that truth of Jesus is Lord, we add the complexities we add the layer upon layer upon layer. And we think it's good. But as we add that layer, Jesus tends to get pushed down to the bottom. And all of a sudden, Jesus is 10 feet away and we're still floating out to sea. There's another truth that Paul talks about, and, and that, that truth is uh, that Jesus is the way. 
This goes back to John 14. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one may come to the Father but through him. Sometimes as we drift, we just think Jesus is a way, not the way. Jesus is just something good that can help me grow. Jesus is something, someone good who can, can keep me on the right track. We don't see that Jesus is the way. And, and we drift, again, we, we start drifting away from that truth that Jesus is the one who died for us. It's, 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 we put our faith in Christ Jesus, is what he says in, in Galatians 2.16, that we may be justified by faith, not by our works, not by the works of the law, but by our faith. So this anchor of truth is something that we can hold on to. This anchor of truth will, will keep us from drifting, drifting too far, because as we, we look of how do we put this into practice, um, how do we set the anchor, we, we begin by first realizing that we're drifting. We begin to realize that, that, that we've, we've added something to Jesus. And I'm not talking weight or hair, or eye color. We've added. It's not just Jesus anymore. And, and so we begin to, to look for the truth. We come back to this Galatians 2 piece. We come back to this understanding of, of John 14, 6. We come back to, to reading the Gospels one more time. We come back to seeing that, that Jesus was there for all people. That as he's hanging on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. Notice the word is them. Forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. It's not just one person. It's just not a select group. It's a them. And so as we begin to realize that, and we realize that we're beginning to drift, we, we begin to, to start looking back at Christ. When we start looking at, at, at who Jesus is, we drop the anger, anchor, not anger, anchor. We drop the anchor and we, we lean into that truth that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the one who continues to develop that relationship with us, that Jesus is the one who calls us to be with him, that Jesus is not Jesus and it's Jesus. And we get on our knees, we repent, we seek God's face once again, we, we lean into that truth. And when those words of, of, you know, you need to have Jesus and you need to do this, and we can say, no, hold on a minute. I, I, I don't need to do that. I want to do that. I just need to have Jesus. I just need to know that he is there for me. I just need to know that he died and rose again. I just need to know truth that he gives me, that I can stand on that foundation, I can have that anchor and that crisis of faith, that storm that bubbles up can, can take me in different directions, but my anchor is still firmly in Jesus. Because I'm going to keep seeking him. I'm going to keep finding Jesus in my situation. I'm going to keep seeking out the truth that he has given me. I'm going to keep looking. Yeah, I may, I, I may go down some rabbit holes, but I'm still holding on to that truth he's given to me. And then we repeat. Because something will take our eyes off that anchor. Something will cause us to drift even a little bit further. And we realize that we're drifting. We realize we're not there. Uh, as we were in the ocean on, on Tuesday, the tide was going out. So when we started in the morning, we got there around 10 o'clock. As we got there in the morning, we were, we were close to shore. By the time lunchtime came around, we're talking about like noon or so, um, there was a good 10, 15, 20 feet from where we had started 
to now where the water was. So we have to go out a little bit further into the ocean. We have to go out a little further uh, away from shore to get to the water. The water current was stronger out there. So it was always that vigilance of, of telling Jake, mainly Josh, because he's shorter, so he can't stand like we, Jacob and I were standing, telling Josh, you can't go past this point. Because if you go past this point, you're not going to be able to, to stay here. You're going to start floating away because the waves will take you out. And it was just that constant reminder, Josh, don't go past this point. Don't go past this point. But we kept moving further out because the water kept going further out. After about a half hour, it's like, okay, we are way out too far because we lost our anchor. We lost the point that was holding us firm, which was the shore. So we came back in. Actually, at that point in time, we were all read and done anyways, but it was uh, one of those lessons that we need to have that anchor. We need to have that point, and we can drift away. But we need to come back. Maybe this morning you're not drifting. Maybe you have that anchor, and it's set, and it's firm, and it's locked into place. Maybe you're at a spot where that anchor is, you've drifted a little bit. And, and you, want, you need to come back. You're realizing how far you've gone. You've had Jesus and you've added to Jesus. Or, or maybe Jesus has kind of disappeared in your life. And you don't know where to turn to next. Maybe it's time to reset that anchor. To come back to, to looking at, at the people that Jesus interacts with. And Jesus says that you are forgiven. That Jesus says you are healed. That Jesus says that you are loved. Jesus says that you are a part of my family. Jesus says that you are at the center of why he came. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The verse 17 is just as important because it says, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. That Jesus is that anchor. He doesn't stand there and say, everyone but you. He says, I came for you. Trust me. Grab a hold of me. Let's dig deeper into who I am. Lean into me. And as this crisis of faith, as this storm of life comes upon you, let me show you how I can be there for you. If you're drifting, set your anchor. Lean into that anchor and believe. Believe.